I am so excited for you to see the living room update. Hey guys, it is Jen with Mother Time and today I am going to take you along as I do a little update in the living room. Thanks to Wayne for helping me out on this one. A couple of weeks ago, I shared my kitchen update with you, which was so much fun. Adding the faux beams, that beautiful copper faucet, taking down the microwave and adding the pot rack with the beautiful copper pots. That was such a fun update to do. Well, guess what? Now we are heading into the living room and just doing a few little updates. I recently also added the hutch that I thrifted that I shared with you, but I have been struggling with the wall that has the TV on it, the very large TV on it. And I wanted to do something to that wall to make it a focal point in a sense that you were always looking at it, the TV is there, but I wanted it to just look pretty. So we're gonna add some board and batten, and then, I'm so excited, we're adding some faux beams on the ceilings in, or the ceiling, <laughs> not ceilings, ceiling in the living room too. I love the faux beams in the kitchen. So I'm gonna take that into the living room. I'm even thinking now too of adding them here in the dining room. I just, I love it. It just really makes the space feel cozy and it is so easy to do with just some pine boards, some two by fours, which we use in the kitchen. We're using one by sixes in the living room. Anyways, I'm so excited to take you along and show, show you how it turns out. So grab yourself a warm cup of coffee and let's head into the living room to get started. It is about to get really cozy in here because we are going to do a little makeover in the living room. I've hinted at the fact that we are gonna do some beams in the living room. I just think it's really gonna cozy up the space. So I'm gonna kind of talk you through really quick what we're gonna do and then Wayne's gonna get going since he's taking the reins on this project. I'm gonna be, I'll be helping him out. So first things first, just like we did in the kitchen, we are gonna be adding faux beams to the ceiling. I'm gonna be adding three in here. Now, the thing of it is, these are relatively low ceilings. I don't want anything huge on the ceiling to like really hang down. So just like we did in the kitchen update, we're gonna be adding beams, but instead of two by fours, which we used in the living room, we're gonna be, or in the kitchen, we're gonna be doing one by sixes. So. Um, a little bit longer, but shorter, just so they really don't hang down too low and then they might bring the ceiling down a little bit. So I figured let's just do the one inches, but we'll just do a wider, uh, wider wood. We're gonna stain it the same way using the Minwax Early American Stain. I'll be showing you all of that as we go through that as well. We're gonna be adding three beams, one in the center and then two on each side here. I can't wait, I cannot wait. That is the cozy update number one. Now are you ready for number two? So I have talked about how I've struggled always a little bit with this wall here. Uh, it's just a long wall and we have a 70 inch <laughs> television hanging on it. And that is like the one thing Wayne wants and my kids love. Uh, we love watching movies and, of course, sports, football. Wayne loves his golf, all of the things. So, you know, give the man what he wants. He wants a big TV. That's what we have. You know, he does so much for me. I can give him his TV. But anyway, so I've always kind of struggled a bit with this wall as far as, you know, from a decor and a design standpoint. Well, I think I finally, we'll see, we'll see how this goes, have come up with a solution for it because I don't want to add a lot of clutter. I don't want more tables don't want things like that. We are going to be doing board and batten on this wall, just like we've done in the hallway in the past and also in the entryway. We're gonna do it on this wall. So first he's gonna hang the board and batten. Then I'm gonna decide if I wanna keep it white underneath like the rest of the board and batten throughout the house, or I may add a little bit of color, <laughs> a little bit of color, neutral <laughs> color, just to kind of make this a focal wall, so to speak, because you're obviously looking at the TV, so it is a focal point of some point. So we'll see. I said, let's first get it hung, and then I can kind of get, I'm such a visual person, which I've talked about before, that I want to really see how it looks um, before I decide on, on the color. So I haven't quite decided if we're going to do the color or if we're just going to paint it white. So the beams and then the board and batten. Anyways, we're going to get started with the board and batten today. So I'm gonna get everything removed and he's gonna start hanging the board and batten. 
once we're done with this then we'll be going to the beams so it's going to be a fun project so here is the last look of the living room before without the wall and of course without the beams and i can't wait to see how this turns out We removed everything from the wall except the TV. We're just going to work around it. Thankfully, it pushes away from the wall. So we are going to start by hanging one by fours. We have two one by fours that are 10 feet long. We did trim one down a little bit because the wall is just a little over 18 feet. So we have half of it up. Oreo is assisting us in this project. And now you can see he has the other one hung up. He uses an air compressor gun to hang it and uses a level to make sure it's straight. We use one by three for the vertical pieces, attaching them to the wall with an air compressor nail gun. We ended up hanging four. Originally I was gonna do five and we spaced them out 40 inches apart. I wanted to have a couple on each side of the TV. Next, Wayne is gonna go around all of the edges with some caulk and then he uses his scraper to scrape off the excess caulk. Now it's time to choose a pink color for the board and batten. I have a bunch of swatches. I cut out the colors I like and I attach it to the wall with some double-sided tape. It is day two of our living room update. We got the board and batten hung but are stalled because I'm trying to decide on the color. Like I mentioned, I wanted to do something a little bolder. And I think going with the bolder color would also encase the television a little bit more and not make the television, television such a focal point and really pop out. Having this a darker color would kind of make it look more all <laughs> tucked in, so, so to speak, and just make it not so... So it's such a focal point, just a TV, this being a darker color. So with that being said, I like to take the little samples. I cut the little cards up with the colors that I liked um, and I put them around, but I like to look at it in different lighting in different times of the day. So I originally hung these up last night to get a night look at them, looking at them with the lights on, um, just to kind of see how the light plays because it can totally change um, how the color is going to look in different lighting and so on. So anyways, kind of leaning towards, we like this color a lot, something a little bit bold originally. I thought maybe doing a, like a lighter color, but I think it's also not going to make it pop as much, um, on the wall because I am going to keep the color above, which is Sherwin Williams alabaster. So these are a few of the colors that we have here. Like I said, we, this is the Revere Pewter that I used on the cabinets in the uh, pantry update. So I was kind of thinking maybe that to kind of keep the same color and keep a consistency with color. But I'm not too sure about that. Now, we're leaning like this is called Clarksville Gray. Um, this is Quincy Tan. I don't think that's a, on the running. This was a maybe at one point. Um, and then let me take you to the other side. And here are a few more colors. I'm leaning to... Victorian Garden, which I think is really pretty. This is Ashley Gray. This may be too dark. And then here were some of the originals that I was considering. Uh, Stingray, I liked. Gray Owl, I liked too. But I don't feel that that's going to really pop on the board and batten um, and, and frame in the television. So those are a few of the colors. I'm going to sit on it a little bit longer, let different lighting come in, turn on the lights as well, and make a decision. I'm going to do a little process of elimination, and I think this one is going to be a no. This was Stingray. It's just too close to the alabaster color, and I want something to really, there be some contrast. And this one's going to be a no. And then this also helps me <laughs> finally decide. And then this one. I did like this one. 
This one had a little bit of contrast when you hold it up against the wall color, but I really want it to be almost bold and it's paint, so I can always change it. So I got these two left and let me check the other side. And over here, I think eliminating this one, just a little too tan. I almost wanted like a gray, greenish gray even. I still keep gravitating to Clarksville gray. I like that one. Keeping pewter up just because, like I mentioned before, that, you know, is a color that we have in the house. So it might be nice to kind of just use that one too. But that's probably the bottom of the list right now. And then this one's really pretty too, Nantucket. So I'm going to take a look back now with the ones that I have up. I still keep leaning to this one. I'm really liking this Nantucket gray too. And then what I like to do is I'm going to take this one down and bring it over here and kind of play with it in different lighting too. So since I do like this one, let's see how I like it here. So this is kind of like the game I play when I am looking at color. This might be too brown gray. This one is the Ashley gray. Still loving that one. And it has a very similar to this one. Look at how similar those two are. And these are my top two favorites. I think we, I think this may be, look at how close they are. Those are really, really close. So this is, now I have it on the opposite side to see how it plays because I've, you know, we've painted stuff before in the years past and then it's just, we're repainting it. So I've kind of played this game to really kind of figure out what color I ultimately want to go with, but I'm still, I'm leaning at these. These are really pretty. You will obviously see coming up shortly in this video what color I decide to go with, but as of right now, I am still undecided. Let me know in the comments what color you are leaning towards and stay tuned to see what color I end up going with. Insert Jeopardy music here because I'm still deciding and I've actually added on a few new swatches now that I've decided I want to definitely go more bold, I added this one on, Hampshire Gray, there's the Gettysburg too, and then also moving them around. Now I have them on the wall. I have a few more over there too, to kind of just see them in different lighting. Also kind of putting them near the TV too. And hopefully here, instead of doing process of elimination, I'm adding more on, but hopefully here soon I'll start taking ones off. Like I think, this is at Quincy Tan. I did have that off. I added it back on. Now I think it's off. Well, so we have one down, <laughs> but uh, so for more to still go. Narrowed it down to the top five. Still in the running is at Gettysburg Gray. That has been in the running since the beginning. I have a couple new ones in there. The Desert Twilight. There's the Clarksville Gray. The Victorian Garden. So narrowing it down and hopefully I will decide on one soon. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Nantucket Gray and actually put it on the other side of the wall. And see, I just love just to see how it goes with the rest of the furniture, make sure it ties in and it's not, you know, look out of place. Just love this color. This is Nantucket Gray, and I think we may have found a winner. Here is the Nantucket Gray. It's really pretty, definitely has a green hint to it, but you can also pick up on the gray too. He's adding it also near the TV so I can see how it plays against the TV too. So a little update last night after the Nantucket Gray dried, it was leaning a little more green than I wanted to do. And I was sitting here thinking, well, maybe I'll try a different color, more like a brown gray. Also to tie in with the frames that I have in the room because I love that cohesive look and was thinking of also doing some of those frames possibly on this wall too, just to kind of bring it all together. I'll grab one of those frames in just a second, just so you can see. So I grabbed a half pint of paint at Benjamin Moore and this is the Ashley Gray. So it definitely has more of the brown gray tones. I had one of the little swatches up on the wall, but it came 
came down early definitely didn't make the top five but you can see here with the little uh area that i painted it's definitely got more of that brown gray and i think would look really pretty in here too so now i'm leaning more to that shade than to the green because i also like to think ahead and think for the seasons and how everything's going to work in this room and when i add greenery and all of the things so that's a little update leaning to the ashley gray let me know in the comments which color you like more did you like do you like the ashley gray or do you like the nantucket gray so i think i'm going to keep it limited to those two options and get painted so then we can get to the beams I also wanted to show you really quick what the frames look like. So I took this off the wall that was over here. And like I mentioned, I love that cohesive look uh, with the frames. And look how pretty this frame looks against the Ashley Gray. It's really pretty. And then even popping it with a little bit of black too, I think would look really timeless and classic and just really, really pretty. This is the Gray Belmont frame from Michaels. I use them throughout my home. I love it. And this is just a print from Etsy that I've had for a while too. Really pretty. And I like to frame it outside of the plexiglass for that really pretty matte look. But I have two of them up over here, which I've had here for a while. So this was also part of the inspo, these frames and the frame color. And look how pretty that looks. I love that too. I decided to go with the Ashley Gray and I cannot wait to show you how it turned out. It is now day three or four. I don't know. I've lost count, but wanted to give you a little update, mostly of the sconces. I'm going to touch base on those in just one second. So we finished up painting the board and batten, and I love it. It's beautiful. It really cozies up the space and just frames in that frame, uh, uh, frames in the television. And I'm so happy we went with that Ashley Gray too. It's that perfect color for this room. Anyways, I know I, I want to get to the sconces. So I was going to do the pictures like I mentioned, which I have here, and we did hang them up on the wall or just like look. And I don't know, it was just looking too busy, so I've kind of been thinking about it. I had these beautiful sconces that I actually got from Farmhouse Wares. If they're still available, I'll link them. And I got them a few years ago when we did the board and batten in the entryway. And then I moved them to the dining room when I got new sconces for the entryway. And I hung them here just to see how it would look. And I love it. And even Wayne, he was out, he came in and he was like, whoa, these look, don't you love them, Wayne? Wayne is in here. He, he was like, wow, these look really, really pretty. And I love that simplified look. And I love the pop of black. And it's simple. I know I've talked about maybe doing shelves up here or doing the pictures up here. But sometimes, and most of the time, less is more. And it's so, so pretty. Now we may run, depending on time, to a store that we know that sells these beautiful primitive sconces just to see if they have something that would work better maybe even a little bit bigger but i'm not too worried about it because i love these i know we have to center them uh we're going to center them with the board and batten too now you may notice too i did do a little bit of playing and i just was doing it quickly in the morning with some coffee not filming and i just kind of restyled the entertainment center a little bit just added a few things that i've recently thrifted on there just to kind of get this room looking a little together. And then this table I added was actually in the dining room. I've had it forever. I have another one too. So I borrowed this from the dining room, but I think I have another one in the basement that I can put back there. Just added a simple little buffet light. These are the buffet lights that I love. Um, added this galvanized bucket, which I actually just had here on the coffee table. And again, simple, but I love the simplicity. Uh, again, we have to center the sconces. I just hung those up with nails that were on the wall just to see how I like them and I really really like them we'll get back to the board and batten wall in just a bit now we are moving on to the DIY faux beams we are using one by sixes for the faux beams these are 20 feet and then we're just going to cut them down to fit the ceiling First, Wayne is going to stain them and we are using Minwax stain in the color Early American. We are now ready to hang the faux beams. We will be using one by sixes for this project that we stained with Minwax stain in the color Early American, the same color that we used for the beams in the kitchen, but we used two by fours in there. These are one by sixes 
and we brought all of the tools and the saw in here to do all the cutting so we're not moving these 20 foot beams back and forth because we're going to need to trim them down a few feet um, so we're going to hang them he's going to do the same thing as he did with the kitchen uh, he's going to do his pilot holes add his screws find the stud and get three of these up on the ceiling we measured the ceiling and took the beam up cut the beam to about 13 feet and then even took it back up after we cut it to make sure that it fit and wasn't too big and now Wayne is going to drill the holes, add the screws, make the pilot holes, just like he did in the kitchen. So then once we get up on the ladder to hang this, it's much easier. So what are these that you're adding? pilot holes to yep. make the screws go in easier when we hang it. And then we're going to add finishing caps so the screws are flush. This is a finishing hole so the screw is flush with the wood. And are you going all the way into the wood? No. All the way through? An eighth of an inch. Just an eighth, eighth of an inch, okay. Just to get the screw fresh. And so then when you do this, it finishes nicely. Just enough to grip it. All the screws were in place. We hung them on the ceiling. We did use a stud finder to find the stud before hanging them. And then he used some wood putty to cover the screws. I picked up these frames that I showed you a couple weeks ago thrifting. So I thought these would be nice to decorate around the room too they were only 99 cents at the thrift store so i have these prints that you can actually get on my blog for free i'll include a link uh in the description and what i'm going to do is just take a few of them and then take my glass and trace around different parts of the picture so i'm not gonna so i'm gonna try to get two maybe out of one just so i'm not wasting any Give me a little trace line so i'm just using this but this is always so easy to do especially with some really pretty art look at how pretty that is so i'm just going to cut it out okay let's see how that looks well look at how pretty so easy with a thrift store frame now these frames actually screwed in I just have to line up the holes and just like that I have some really pretty vintage art with some thrifted frames so I'm gonna go ahead and close that up with the screws and frame the other ones I'm going to add my frame prints around the living room and I am calling this project done for now. I love the way this turned out. Look at those beams. It has totally transformed this room and the board and batten. I can't believe what that looked like before. It's like that it was meant to be and the whole color and the changing of the color 
it is just so pretty. It smells so good with the blueberry cobbler candle. Oh, it smells so good in here too. I love it. My family loves it. It is so cozy in here and just what I wanted for this living room. I had a chance to go to the Old Steeple, which is such a cute shop here in the Western New York area. I think I've even done little shop with me videos there before and showed you the inside. It's in an old restored church. So cute, such beautiful decor. Anyways, they have great sconces there. They even have these there too. Anyways, I've seen these there before and I've thought about them. And I th these were the ones that I thought about getting for the wall above the board and batten. So I said, if, they're, if I go and they're there, it's obviously meant to be. So they were there and I think they're gonna look really good here. I like that they're a little bit wider than these as much as I do love these too but just take up a little bit more room without still being, you know, I don't want it to be too busy. I love that colonial look. So let's get these hung on the wall and see how these look. I know I've already kind of shown you the final room with these here, but I wanted to fit this in to show you these two. These sconces were meant to be here. They look beautiful. As much as I love the other ones, these just take it over the top and are so perfect. I love them. I'm so happy I was able to get them before I shared the video so I could sneak this in and you could see how they look in here too. Okay, you guys, that is all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it gave you some decorating inspo for your home as well. Give this video a big thumbs up if it did. Let me know in the comments below what you enjoyed the most. And don't forget to follow me over on Facebook and Instagram at Mother Time. You can also check out my blog, mothertime.com for even more ideas and food and home decor and all the things too. Thank you so much for joining me here today. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.